Good afternoon, friends. Good morning, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy. I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. Welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We've been spending a lot of time talking about the ketogenic diet and its multiple health benefits. We will continue to do that in the coming days. Today, I thought we'd take a digression, a slight digression, and talk about a nutritional supplement that I have personally been using for over a month now on a daily basis, a product that I'm so impressed with that I will be carrying it on brightsidehealth.com along with a few other interesting and healthful products. It's called Bone Broth Protein. It's a powdered supplement derived from bone soup which we've been talking about in this program for a long time. It's a, a food, really. It's a powerful source of nutrition. And uh, it's the brainchild of one of the most brilliant and innovative health experts you will ever hear, a visionary thinker who walks his talk and has personal experience with the power of nutrition and using nutrients to leverage health and the human body's divinely mandated healing abilities. Of course, I'm talking about my friend and my mentor, Jordan Rubin, formulator, health guru, and author of numerous books, including The Maker's Diet, Patient Heal Thyself, The Great Physicians Rx, and my personal favorite, Restoring Your Digestive Health, with book that I've been recommending and reading for years. So without further ado, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome Jordan Rubin to the bright side. Hey, Jordan, good morning. Nice to talk good to morning, you. Thanks ben. for coming Thanks on. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Thank you for being here. here. Thank you for being here. Listen, before we get going, I want you to briefly tell your story for those folks who may not know a little bit about your personal health journey. It's so interesting and it's so compelling. And maybe a little bit about how you personally healed yourself from a life-threatening disease. Absolutely. I was a teenager, loving life, extremely healthy, and all of a sudden, and seemingly overnight, I was stricken with multiple incurable diseases, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes. I had parasitic, bacterial, fungal, viral infections, complete breakdown of my immune system, and ultimately wasted away to a low of 104 pounds, wheelchair bound, and I'm six feet tall. After trying 69 medical experts, to no avail, conventional medicine failed, natural cures failed. I met a man who taught me how to eat based on the Bible, history, and science. And in a 40-day period that I would later refer to as the maker's diet 40-day health experience, I went from death to life, sickness to health, and wow. I guess you could say from mess to messenger. And upon getting my life and health back and being medication-free for now 20 years, I began a journey to help transform the health of this nation and world one life at a time. I started health companies. I've now written 25 books on health, wellness, nutrition, and, and even faith. And I'm today more passionate than I was all those years ago because I've seen people's lives transformed by the simple approach that if we can replace the valuable components that we should have in our diet, foundational foods, we can overcome any health challenge. And that's what drives me today and really excited to be here to share with people a truth that has been hidden in plain sight that I believe will transform your entire body and your life. 
I love it. You know, I've been talking about bone broth for years, and when your associate told me about bone broth protein as a powdered supplement, my my uh, nutritionist ears perked up. It seems it seemed like such a simple idea. It seemed like it, it was simple, but it was very inspired. How and why did you come up with this, and why do you think nobody's brought it to market until until now? <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing a little bit, Ben, because the answer to how I formulate is pretty simple. I need something, my family needs something, I find it, and then it works, and I'm compelled to share it with the world. And this was no different. I was dealing with a, a knee issue, some inflammation, and it's interesting. I've been writing about the benefits of bone broth since the book you referenced, Restoring Your Digestive Health, in 2003. I've recommended it as a first cleanse. I recommend it as a last resort. I recommend it everything in between. But let's face it, it's difficult to make. It's messy. It's expensive. Right. So I sort of fell off of my bone broth bandwagon. And then when my knee was bothering me, I started making it. But I realized I need to consume so much bone broth that I have to make another batch before one's done. It cooks for 24 hours. It smells up the house. So then I found a really great brand of organic bone broth in a frozen liquid. So I'm defrosting that when I remember it's leaking, but either way, it's good. I'm doing 48 ounces a day, Ben, of bone broth so that I can support the health of my joints, ligaments, tendons, and it's working. So then I'm going to Florida for a 10-day trip, and I don't have access to this bone broth. I talk to folks that are there. I say, hey, can you buy me some at the local health food store? It doesn't carry it. So I looked into some of the ingredients I've been using to formulate, and get this. I had a bone broth substance that I was using as an ingredient and a flavoring for another product. And I said, well, I've got nothing else. I'm going to go to Florida and I'm going to consume this powder mixed in liquid, replacing my bone broth and see how I do with a very busy schedule. Wow. And lo and behold, tasted good. The results were great. And I said to my team, hey, send me a specification sheet. I want to know what's in here. And huh. when I saw it, it blew my mind and I saw it in big headlines bone broth protein. I saw the end from the beginning, and I oh, knew wow. then, Ben, that this was going to be the next, and I believe, most important protein powder, if not supplement, we could ever consume. That is so, so cool. It's like asking you shall receive. And that's amazing. That's an amazing story. Hey, listen, I want to talk, there's so much to talk about with bone broth protein, but I think maybe we should start off with the basics. Talk, tell us a little bit about what protein is as opposed to the two other uh, macronutrients that everyone knows about, carbs and fat. How is protein distinguished and what exactly it is? What exactly is it? First of all, protein comes from the Latin term proteus, which means of primary importance or that which comes first. Protein makes up the components of your cells. We're talking about skin, hair, nails. We're talking about muscles. We're talking about immune cells. We're talking about hormones. Protein is the critical nutrient among the macronutrients for you being you. DNA is made of protein. I could go on and on. So I would submit, Ben, that the type of proteins we consume in our bodies could be as important as any single mm. decision we make. That's powerful stuff. So bone broth protein, you know, when you, people talk about bone broth, there's a distinction that we got to make between bone broth protein and bone broth itself in terms of what it's made up of, cost, convenience, or anything, anything else you can come up with. Tell us how bone broth protein is distinguished from bone broth. Well, it's, it's a great question. What bone broth protein is, is comprised of the best elements of bone broth without high sodium, no mess, and not a great expense. So if we look at the dozens of articles, and you and I were talking off the air about research and articles on bone broth, and to say that bone broth is blowing up is an understatement. <laughs> it was a niche. Now it is uh, so a true. trend. Hollywood stars, yeah, professional yeah. athletes are being mandated to use it. So bone broth protein is the best of bone broth in a convenient form, high protein, high in nutrients, and beneficial compounds to support joint health, gut health, skin and beauty, and many more. Okay, we got to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about how the proteins in bone broth are distinguished from other protein supplements that, that uh, people may be using or may have heard about. We'll do that when we come back from our break. We're talking to Jordan Rubin about bone broth protein. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a break and be back right after this. Don't go away. 
We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific Time. And, and uh, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 12 Central Time. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, please head over to truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel. And if you're interested in checking out our Brightside Health products, including bone broth protein, head over to brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. We're talking to Jordan Rubin, formulator of the bone broth protein. Jordan, what is the major difference, or at least some of the major differences, between the protein that you'll get in the bone broth protein and, and other proteins that people may have heard about or are using, such as whey protein or, or hemp seed protein or egg protein? How is bone broth protein distinguished from those? I think, Ben, what's most important or first important is the differences that bone broth doesn't have. So let me explain. Bone broth protein is powerful for all its nutrients, beneficial compounds, proteins. We'll talk about that. But the main reason people become attracted to bone broth protein, in my opinion, is it's a protein that's dairy-free, gluten-free, <laughs> grain-free, soy-free, gut-friendly, and paleo-friendly. You've been talking about the ketogenic diet, as you mentioned. I believe that bone broth protein is the ideal protein and or supplement for a ketogenic, low-carb, paleo diet. And it's really the ideal supplement for people today who are experiencing what they would call accelerated aging. We talked about this yesterday. Bone broth may be the most important internal beauty product you could ever consume. So when you're looking at whey protein, it's dairy. It's an allergen. When you're looking at soy protein, it's one of the top allergens. Rice protein's a grain. Pea protein's a legume. Hemp protein's a seed, which is definitely better for those on a paleo or a grain-free diet, but it still has its limiting factors. Bone broth protein is great as your sole protein supplement, or it's great along with other proteins. And here's probably the most exciting aspect, Ben, Despite what you think, bone broth protein tastes great. Not yeah. only is there a pure version and a turmeric that can be used warm or room temperature or in recipes. Think about this. When and how can you put bone broth into green juice in the morning? Answer, you can't because you're not going to consume a 32-ounce green juice. But with bone broth protein, you can make your green juice better. You can make the sugars slower to absorb. What about coffee? Adding bone broth protein to coffee makes it taste great and extends the benefit of the caffeine, and it buffers the acidity because bone broth protein is the protein that is alkalizing, not acidifying. And then the list goes on and on. Imagine That's consuming amazing. brown rice or quinoa and adding bone broth protein to the soak water. Now you've got 20 grams of protein wow. in your grain. You could even make recipes, desserts, and we've got a chocolate and vanilla that kids and adults alike absolutely love. I know that sounds strange, but you will love chocolate and vanilla bone broth protein, two grams of carbs, one gram of sugar in the chocolate and vanilla, no grams of carbs or sugar in the pure and turmeric with 20 grams of protein. You can bump up your bone broth, pro your bone broth too. You can bump up the protein value of your bone broth by putting a little bone broth protein in there. Absolutely, and people have done it all the time and we've really enjoyed it. We have a great book that has 57 recipes, how to integrate bone broth protein in your diet. And since it's the missing protein for so long, I believe an accelerated bone broth program, such as the one that I'm on, is ideal for virtually everyone listening right now. Now, when I think about bone broth, I think about connective tissue. 25% or more of the body is made up of connective tissue. You mentioned beauty. All, anybody who knows about beauty or is interested in beauty, uh, particularly women, know about collagen. So when I think of bone broth, I think about connective tissue and collagen. Tell us about how connective tissue is related to overall health. You mentioned accelerated aging. And tell us about the relationship between connective tissue and the aging process and how bone broth protein can specifically, among all, of, all the proteins, how bone broth protein can can benefit you if you're dealing with connective tissue issues, eight, accelerated aging, or uh, you're getting wrinkles, or you're starting to notice aging on the skin? Well, first, let me quickly explain why bone broth, from a scientific standpoint, is different than all the other proteins. The other proteins you mentioned, from egg to soy to whey to milk to rice pea hemp, they all contain high levels of methionine. Methionine is a muscle-building amino acid. It makes that protein a complete protein. 
our diets are overloaded with methionine dominant or muscle building proteins and deficient in connective tissue proteins rich in proline and glycine such as bone broth. For years our ancestors consumed soups, connective tissue. My grandmother used to serve chicken. We ate the breast and the thigh. She would be in the kitchen gnawing on the bones. And if you look at traditional herbal and medical paradigms, they believe that certain parts of of foods that we eat affect certain parts of our body. So therefore the bones and connective tissue of animals would benefit our bones and connective tissue. So balancing the muscle building, proteins, the whey, the dairy, the grains, with the connective tissue proteins from broth is critical to health, and no one's talking about it. So back to your question, though. When when you have an imbalance of the other proteins that are rich in methionine, what happens is you tend to burden your liver, focus on muscular health, and I believe you tend, as a result, to age more quickly because you are not bolstering the part of your body that holds you together. That would be your bones, your joints, ligaments, tendons, and your skin. This leads to injuries. We're seeing it in sports in abundance. This leads to accelerated aging, and this leads to inflexibility and joint discomfort. So therefore, Ben, when someone balances these proteins by consuming bone broth or bone broth protein, they are providing beauty building, bone building, joint building, and really importantly, gut supportive properties, not to mention glycine and proline also contribute to detoxification. Can you imagine consuming a protein Mm. that actually detoxifies you? It is absolutely important. And glycination, which is one of the ways the liver detoxes, as you mentioned, and glycine deficiencies are not uncommon, actually. So you can actually bump up your liver's ability to to glycinate and detoxify and get yourself a source of glycine, which, as you mentioned, methionine, I got to thinking, there's a phenomenon called methionine toxicity, and there's also methionine balancing, correct? Correct. Absolutely. And nobody's talking about it. We now know, Ben, that fats are good especially polyunsaturated essential fatty acids. But we believe we're getting too much omega-6, not enough omega-3, and that balance has been talked about for 15 years. Who's talking about methionine toxicity? Who's talking about methionine imbalance? A few select nutrition pioneers are, but let's get the people knowledgeable now. That's why we're dealing with all of this inflammatory response. That's why we're dealing with all of these leaky gut issues, gut hyperpermeability. It's why we're dealing with accelerated aging. And every time you turn on the TV, people are talking about skincare products, injections. They're talking about ways to tonify the connective tissue. Everyone that I work with uh, who comes to me for health coaching, Ben, has a connective tissue imbalance. Right. Everyone, 100%. Right. And we can begin to chip away at the issue with bone broth protein. You said something super, super cool that I think that I think we really need to dive into, and that is the distinction between methionine-containing proteins and bone protein. And we never make that distinction when we talk about eating meat, but actually meat is not the same as bone. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're talking to Jordan Rubin about bone broth protein. We'll take a quick break and be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're interested in taking a look at our bone broth protein and various flavors, head over to brightsidehealth.com. And everybody who orders bone broth protein uh, today and tomorrow and for the next few days, actually, will get a copy of Jordan's book, a link to a copy of Jordan's book, The Bone Broth Breakthrough. Uh, It's got recipes as well as all things bone broth, which is what we're talking about today with Jordan Rubin. All right, so Jordan, before we went to break, you you said something really cool about meat and about methionine. And most of us, when we think about eating meat, just think about eating meat, but there's actually a very interesting distinction between the meat and the bones, correct? Correct. Absolutely. In fact, that is really the epitome of a methionine-dominant protein versus a proline-glycine-dominant, or what we're calling muscle-building versus connective tissue building. Mm -hmm. To be clear, I'm assuming that everyone listening is either consuming animal meat, eggs, dairy, grain, seeds, legumes, or certainly grain, seeds, and legumes if you're a vegan or on a plant-based diet. As different as you would think muscle meat and seeds are, they actually are both high in methionine. However, 
broth from bones and connective tissue is very different. People ask me all the time, Ben, are you saying that bone broth protein is the only protein I should consume? Absolutely not. But I do believe bone broth protein is the only supplemental protein that people should consume. There's a big distinction. Here's my point. We're already eating grains, seeds, nuts, legumes, Mm. dairy, eggs, and meat. Why supplement, which means get something you don't have when you already have it? So what I'm saying is eat broth. Certainly do it. We can talk about the differences again with broth and bone broth protein. Eat it in your diet, but I doubt you can get enough to correct the imbalance. However, you certainly don't need more rice protein, pea protein, milk protein, or beef protein. What we need is protein sources that also contain collagen, hyaluronic acid, glucosamine, chondroitin, and many other what we would call glycosaminoglycans that are all found in bone broth protein. And bone broth protein, Ben, almost acts as an electrolyte replacement because it is rich in organically bound serum-soluble minerals such as potassium and sodium. It is absolutely amazing how well-rounded bone broth protein is. And I give a lot of seminars, as you do, and I've never had a product. By the way, I've developed hundreds. I've never had a product where every person that comes in the book signing line who asks me for advice, I say, take bone broth protein. Take bone broth protein. I've found that ocular health or your eyes can be improved. You can grow your nails faster. I I can't think of anything from head to toe that can't be supported by bone broth protein. Because connective tissue is head to toe. And it's the connective, everything you're talking about is the connective tissue. And I think this distinction is just brilliant between the, uh, between what you're calling uh, muscle building protein, I would say meat, and connective tissue building protein, which is the bone. In other words, we're supposed to be eating the chicken, the leg, and the bone as well, the flesh and the bone. But we don't. We just eat the flesh. And what you're saying is this bone broth protein helps balance out the excess muscle building protein that you get when you're eating, uh, when you're eating the chicken. So why have more of that? If, because, which is what most supplements are. It's just more of that. We should be we should be balancing it out. That is absolutely absolutely brilliant. And I, I predict, uh, as you mentioned, that we'll be talking more and more about this idea of methionine toxicity and methionine balance uh, in the coming months and coming years as well. Gosh, you said so many different things there that are fascinating to me. Uh, I've been working with glucosaminoglycans in the skin health business for many many years. They're well known as being super important for the skin, uh, but you can't get anywhere near the benefits of the glucosaminoglycans topically that you count as when you ingest them. Glucosaminoglycans help swell the skin, help pro- uh, protect against wrinkles. They stimulate the production of collagen, uh, Jordan, not just, they're not just collagen, they stimulate the production of collagen. And then also, I wish you would, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about glucosaminoglycans and the immune system and what they do for the immune system? Because you're talking here about a protein that is very powerful for the immune system as well, correct? Absolutely, and I think we all agree that supporting healthy inflammation response is number one when it comes to immune system and probably number two is supporting the gut and number three is detoxification so if you can support detoxification through increasing glutathione the master antioxidant if you can support gut health with the combination of proteins amino acids and glycosaminoglycans and you can support the immune system through number one, healthy inflammation response. And then of course, we know that chicken soup supports the immune system. University of Nebraska researchers believe that components within bone broth help stimulate neutrophil production, which can help support the immune system additionally. So there are so many ways to do it, but here's what I want you to understand. Bone broth protein doesn't just give you the equivalent of multiple cups of home-cooked bone broth. It gives you glucosamine, chondroitin, hyaluronic acid and collagen at a full dose. You're getting more Mm. collagen from bone broth protein than the clinical research dictates. And that means you can replace your collagen. Number two, more chondroitin than the research, which is very credible for supporting healthy inflammation and joint comfort. You get more of that in one serving of bone broth protein. You get glucosamine. And Ben, when we talked about this, this is probably the most exciting aspect of what's hidden inside bone broth protein. 650 milligrams of serum-soluble hyaluronic acid. That's that awesome. In solution and absorbable 
that's an expensive product on that its alone, own. Jordan. Just that alone makes the bone broth protein a stupendous, a stupendous supplement. Just that, without anything else. That's that's amazing, man. How about for wound healing and post surgery? That's a great question. I do believe that anything that holds you up and covers you, which is your skin, bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, is made better by stimulating and supporting connective tissue. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a time of day, year, month, or a circumstance not to consume it. And I'm ready to say this. If someone's listening and says, I feel good, I would like to have maybe some more joint flexibility and comfort, but I really want to look better. Today, people are doing a lot of therapies with bioidentical hormones. They're getting a lot of treatments. They're easier to get. They're more convenient. But let's face it, they still come with risks. They still can change the way you look, and they're not natural. I believe bone broth protein is such a strong internal beauty product that I would challenge people to order the product, take a facial photograph, and three months later, observe mm. it. I'm not going to tell you exactly what's going to happen, but I do believe It'll look better. that when you consume connective tissue, building proteins and nutrients, and electrolytes, I believe you're going to see you can't help it. a visible you, difference. Yeah, you can't help get a, but get a visible difference. You said some, uh, something just now very interesting. You know, people are on these hormone replacement therapy programs, protocols. Um, I'd say more, more postmenopausal women are on it than not. Uh, hormones are, are pushing synthesis. They're turning the cells on. But what the bone broth protein is providing is the raw materials so that when you're driving, ex, uh, when, when you're upregulating protein synthesis at the cell level with the hormones, having the raw materials is probably a good idea. Yeah, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And I'm not suggesting that this replaces hormone therapy, but if Together. you're on an anti-aging protocol, how could you not address yeah. this powerful issue? Because otherwise, it's sort of a Band-Aid, right? Right. And you could even actually do more harm than good if you try to upregulate synthesis without having the raw materials, which the bone broth protein will provide. All right. We've got to take a, uh, a break, Jordan. Come, we'll come back and uh, we'll talk a little bit about digestibility and bioavailability and also a little bit about the cost of the bone broth, bone broth protein when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back in just a little bit. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. If you're interested in taking a look or purchasing our bone broth protein, head over to brightsidehealth.com and we will uh, send you a link in return or with your order for a copy of the bone broth breakthrough. That's Jordan Rubin's uh, bone broth book with uh, recipes as well as information. A lot of the information we're talking about here today. All right, Jordan, di uh, digestibility of bone broth protein. That's one of its features, no? No. Oh. Absolutely. I mentioned the term serum soluble, and let's just think about it this way. Insoluble means it can't mix with water, so it'll be dispersed, it'll float, or it'll sink. Soluble means it mixes in water. Some people will call this isotonic, hypertonic. I think that it is very important to understand that anything we consume, because our, our body is a water body, must be put in solution before it's utilized. So bone broth protein and all of the constituents being in this serum soluble form require less work for the body to get it into the system. And I've said this all along, you're not what you eat, you're what you digest and mm -hmm. assimilate. So bone broth protein, in my opinion, not only is incredibly easy to digest, I believe it supports your digestion of other foods. In fact, if we talked yesterday, there is a preclinical study on the main ingredient in bone broth protein that shows that it supports beneficial bacteria and boosts your microbiome. Mm -hmm. And there's no probiotics and no prebiotics, but it helps, in my opinion, seal the gut. And that's so important to all these other areas. We know that the gut's your second brain. We know the gut houses much of your immune system. So bone broth protein is amazing for those purposes. But I want to mention one quick thing, and this is my greatest pleasure with bone broth protein. My whole family uses it. I have six children. I have kids that play sports. They're active and they're growing. I would love to see all children in America consume mm. connective tissue proteins and bone broth protein is perfect for that because as they age, they are getting injuries. My son plays tackle football. He already had a fractured radius and ulna. I wish he was on bone broth protein before and after. I wish that he uh, would have been consuming it all this time, but guess what? He can now, and all the injuries that athletes and even weekend warriors get 
There's more connective tissue issues, ligament tears. There's more tendon tears than mm-hmm. I've ever seen in my life, more fractures. I do believe that if we build our connective tissue, we will be stronger and healthier in the future and stop focusing so much on our muscles. And here's the other thing you asked me yesterday that really was cool. You said, well, Jordan, I know that muscle building proteins build muscle, but what if you're an athlete? I guess you should consume muscle building proteins because they build muscle and connective tissue proteins are not as important. Contrary completely because the key to gaining and building muscle and strength is consistent repetition or stress on your muscle. If you can get an extra workout every two weeks or every month, that's going to make a difference. I have a friend who's been using muscle building proteins. He switched to bone broth protein and told me he has fuller, stronger muscles mm. because he's been able to work out more mm-hmm. because he has less joint and ligament soreness. That's right. very, very key. Most people miss workouts due to knees, shoulders, elbows, etc. And bone broth protein can support the health of our joints, ligaments, and tendons mm-hmm. while accelerating growth of hair and nails and supporting skin health. You could do more muscle work if your connective tissue is working better, basically, is what you're saying, right? Absolutely. And some of the workout programs today that are very popular, the interval training, CrossFit is extremely popular. When I talk to CrossFitters, they are sidelined due to, again, joints, ligaments, and tendons, not Mm -hmm. muscle soreness. And I believe bone broth protein and connective tissue protein can get you back in the gym, get you back in the game sooner than if you are missing these critical nutrients in your diet. All right. So when I think of uh, de- when I think of chronic degenerative diseases, I think of two major two major uh, uh, factors or two major uh, reasons or causes. Number one, I think of leaky gut, and number two, I think of blood sugar, uh, uh, dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, or hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin. So, what is the relationship between connective tissue and connective tissue building, first of all, and leaky gut syndrome? And secondly, what is the relationship between substances like glucosamine and stabilization of blood sugar? I know those are. So there's kind of two big questions. We only have a couple minutes, but if you absolutely. could get into that real quickly. Collagen, proline, and glycine absolutely help to steal the gut. So does glucosamine and chondroitin because the gut regenerates. The lining rebuilds every few days, and these form the building blocks of your gut to seal it up. And we hear about leaky gut all the time. Bone broth, if you look online, is the number one recommended food for leaky gut by most major health experts. And in mm. terms of blood sugar... Not only does glucosamine and chondroitin help support blood sugar, but collagen, which is found in its collagen hydrolysate or collagen type 2 form, when you consume it, it tends to swell in your gut, and it can actually slow down the absorption of some sugars, and it's really, really great for those who are dealing with fluctuations in their blood sugar. And here's something that's really important. If you are someone who cleanses, if you go on a juice, water, or a master cleanse, at the end you look pretty emaciated. I'm making a fish face right now. When you cleanse with bone broth, you are nourished because it provides a protein-sparing effect, Mm. meaning that you are less likely to lose muscle because you are supporting the body with proteins. For years, then, people have come to me who needed to take a break from their toxic allergenic diets, and I have recommended a bone broth cleanse for them instead of a juice cleanse because a juice cleanse could actually make things worse in certain people. Wow. I, n- I never thought of that. That's awesome. How about, uh, how about the relationship between gelatin and the digestive system? When you talk about collagen or uh, uh, proline and hydroxyproline and, and glycine, the amino acids for collagen, how's that related to gelatin and how uh, can, you, uh, can you get literal gelatin, gelatinous benefits or gelatin benefits from the, from the bone broth protein? Well, there's a, a lot of confusion between what is gelatin versus collagen versus collagen hydrolysate. There is a gelatin-like component to the amino acids proline and glycine and hydroxyproline. However, gelatin as we know it, Ben, today is produced from the hooves and hides of animals, which is not a food. And I know I raise animals. Bone broth protein comes from bone broth. It's really the only whole food protein that we can consume today that is similar to what our ancestors have consumed for years. And that allows it to support joints, the gut, 
the skin. And remember, it's gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, free of the top allergens, non-GMO, and it's tested low in heavy metals, antibiotics, and environmental toxins such as pesticides, herbicides, etc. And it tastes great, and it's very useful. And you mentioned that anyone who orders gets a free copy of Bone Broth Breakthrough, which is a powerful book that gives you multiple programs to cleanse, build, and transform your body, plus 57 recipes that, believe me, are absolutely delicious and your whole family will love. So I believe if you're using gelatin, if you're using collagen, if you're using chondroitin, glucosamine, or hyaluronic acid, if you're taking a protein supplement, you can combine all of your efforts into one simple solution called bone broth protein. Wow, that's amazing stuff. Now, how about all this stuff's got to be ridiculously expensive, right? <laughs> well, bone broth's pretty expensive. If you buy bone broth at the store, you're looking at, for the best brands, $10 approximately for a serving and a half. Bone broth protein is $2.25 per serving. So it's about a third of what you would expect to pay from a premium bone broth. And I actually believe it contains more of what you want, less of what you don't. And here's the best part. It requires 10 seconds of effort. Put it in a shaker cup, mix it, add some almond milk, add some coconut milk, add some dairy milk, warm it up if you want. I love it that way. Add it to recipes. It's affordable. It's amazing. And it's about time you boosted your body's skin, hair, nails, and connective tissue. That's awesome. Jordan Rubin, thank you so much, man. Uh, you can go to brightsidehealth.com and check out our uh, bone broth protein. If you order now, you'll get a free a link to a, a bone broth breakthrough, Jordan Rubin's book with recipes, as well as all things bone broth. That's been awesome, Jordan. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on, and hopefully we'll have you on again, and uh, hopefully we'll see you as well sometime soon, sometime down the road. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Ben. All right, man. Have a great day. All right. That was Jordan Rubin, author of multiple books, uh, formulator, and really just a brilliant, brilliant visionary nutritionist. If you're interested in taking a look at our bone broth protein, please head over to brightsidehealth.com. If you order now, you'll get a copy of the bone broth breakthrough. And uh, there's also a whole bunch of other cool products at brightsidehealth.com. Thanks for listening, friends. Tomorrow, we'll continue talking about the ketogenic diet. And uh, that's it. Have yourselves an awesome, spectacular spectacular, wonderful, beautiful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. There's a man named